Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I got a action-packed, lengthy video for you guys today. So, Race 3 came out for a few months now, and with every new boss comes new combat achievement tasks. But, where are they? Well, they're here now, which means I can no longer use the highest tier combat achievement rewards like the Suckslayer Helmet Recolor and the Grandmaster tier of Normal's Hilt. They've also added a bunch of other really good rewards like longer thrall spawns, two times longer to be exact, on top. So we must reclaim the Zuck helmet and complete the combat achievements once again. If you enjoy this action pack video after watching, make sure to leave a like and ring that bell for more exciting content coming your way so you don't miss out. So the race 3 task ranges from, I would say, medium all the way to grandmaster, boasting an impressive 50 new tasks. The hardest ones at a glance seems to be, of course, in the Grandmaster section, the 18-minute 8-man speedrun task for Expert Mode, the Perfect Group Akka in Expert Mode, and the Perfect Group Warden in Expert Mode. So, let's begin. No way! 1803? Oh my god. Because I can, can crumble right there at the end. Right? Uh... Okay, never mind. Um, they already auto completed a bunch. So there's some elite ones, there's some master ones, uh, some grandmaster ones I gotta do. Okay, we're gonna be smart about this and work on the elite stuff first. Alright. Okay, let's do the normal deathless and also not using any supplies from the spirits. Those two tasks in one. Yay, I completed a task, even though that wasn't what I was trying to go for, but... One down. 30-something more to go, I guess. So this task is bugged that I'm doing here. You're supposed to clear this puzzle room in under a minute, but actually it's currently set so that you have to do it in over a minute. So I had to like purposely freeze the crocodile or kill them and just stall for a minute. I did another task for free. The perfect the uh, Krondike bar. There we go. That was really easy one and done. Hardcore Tombs, Helpful Spirit. Look, look at this. You fail Fancy Feet. You hit with an attack style other than melee, but that was a normal TOA, so it should not have even told me I, I failed it. Rice from the future here to tell you that there are some bugs with the new TOA release, but most of them are pretty minor. They're just visual bugs, like for example, the Hell Zegbeck task. It'll say that you failed it, even though you're not even in the Zegbeck room. Also, there are some master level tasks that are both normal available and expert only. So it was a bit confusing because I just assumed all the master or higher was all expert only compatible, but some of them doesn't. And easy way to know is if it doesn't say expert mode next to the task itself, then you can do it on a normal mode. Like this one, the chomp uh, task from Zebuk. Oh, I completed. Huh? All right, look, I'm not gonna question. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the Hail Zebak Grandmaster task. I'm gonna get a hard one out of the way just because it's really annoying seeing that fail message every time I go to a different room that is in Zebak. So I'm just gonna get it done. It's most likely going to be very difficult as I need to fight Zebak at level four, which means the attack speed of Zebak is gonna be incredibly fast. And at the same time, I need to not lose a single prayer point throughout the whole fight. So that means I need to move around, dodge poison, uh, hit the jugs to take care of the poison and dodge the red blood cells and move around and dodge the waves and prayer flake all at the same time without losing any prayer. So this is definitely one of the hardest tasks for sure. Good luck me. So the easiest way I found to do the Hell Zebek is to, of course, max out your infos for Zebek because that's what you have to do. But as for the rest of the infos, I put on Walk the Path and Pathmaster so the bosses start level 3. That means I only have to kill one boss that isn't Zebek, and then Zebek will level up to 4 as the second boss. So Kefri is the best one to do first because it's a melee only setup, and you have to bring melee for Zebek anyways for the BGS recommendations so that means i get a lot of inventory space for like hard food so i just bring a bunch of the vine range pots 
or the 10 tries that I get per run because I have uh, try again on, which lets you try 10 times. And the rest of my inventory space is just hard food like anglers. Bro. I will spare you some of the details of me dying just because I died a ton. I probably died at least 30 times or something trying this task. But I do have some more tips to save you guys the hassle of dying as much as me probably. So during the enrage phase, that's basically the make or break phase because when the tomatoes spawn, it is really hard to move around and dodge the tomatoes while you are flicking the level 4 Zebek attacks and not losing any prayer. So the best way to uh, have a chance of completely avoiding them is to stand on one of the farthest left or right side. So as you can see, I'm camping, let's just say the south side, the left side, as far as I can. Because what happens is, if the red blood cells spawn on the opposite side, they have a high chance to not see me at all and they won't chase me. So with a bit of RNG, you can get really lucky on an enrage phase where the bloods just won't chase you at all. Holy shit, come on. Yes! Oh my god, that took so long. Oh, that was so hard, dude. Literally had to get lucky, and I almost failed it. I literally almost failed it because it was like 1 HP left and then the blood spawn. So if I literally did not hit on that 1 HP or 2 HP or whatever it was, the bloods would have instantly killed me. Okay, that's one of the hardest things done, and I will never see all pretty Sevek failed doing the most random things at TOA anymore. One last thing, some of these tasks you're allowed to die multiple times and try again in the same raid. So, Hell Zebek works that way. So, definitely recommend that because I was able to get a lot more practice in without having to redo the puzzle rooms. Nice, no damage taken. Warden, you believe it. Alright, what is this test? I think it's just doing Warden normally without dying. So, this one was going to be free no matter what. All right, well, we're just going to tank some boulders for the... Oh, I got a purple, though, for this. Holy shit. From a 300. Oh, my God. No way, dude. This is insane. The trolling is real, dude. Holy shit. Wow. Look at, look at this, dude. The trolling is real. I'm on the fifth chaps. Holy. That's crazy. There is an interesting set of tasks involving Baba boulders where... You cannot break the boulders that are normally weak. You have to tank them. And you also just can't break that many boulders in general, even the non-weak ones. And it turned out magic is really good for breaking the non-weak ones. You're allowed to break up to like four because after the fifth one, you fail the task. So you can eliminate some of the damage by uh, breaking four of the non-weak boulders. Magic worked really well. Range does not. So you just tank a lot, bring your brews, and luckily you can do this in a normal raid, so the boulders don't hit you as much. So yeah. You should be able to complete both of these. Come on, show me the money. Yeah, in a rush and no skipping allowed. I am going to stack resourceful raider and you are not prepared task together. So that means I cannot bring in any food or potions from my own into the raid. And also, when I do use potions that are given to me inside the rave by the ghost, I cannot drink potions that give me HP. So the yellow potions won't work. But the Karis will and Resource will, so that's how I'm going to survive. It's just use Karis. Okay, alright, we cleared the first boss without using any prayer, that's good. I was able to breeze through Croc and Kefri at level 300 base expert. And these guys are only level 0. I'm used to doing them at level like 2 to 4. So yeah, much, much easier. Definitely don't need food for this. No brews, but we have a lot of prayer for Karis specking. So if we do need a Karis spec, we still have that opportunity. And also the Liquid Drone is really good too for the Blowpipe heals. Because I can heal extra if I want and not use any prayer. Oh, dude. Oh. Holy shit, the moves, boys. Just in case. Alright, that's... There it is. The combo. I recommend doing this separately, honestly. But it works, it works. You are not prepared, and resource for Raider done. Sweet. We're gonna try the sub-tier 75 gear challenge. Master task. 
Apparently, there's so much gear that's actually level 75 or higher, like in Butte God Cape. You know, I would have never thought of that. And the cares. Pretty sure this is everything that is under tier 75, so... Nightmare Staff for Mage Ancient uh, Magics, Arams, Crystal Armor with Crystal Bow. Classic, you know, not not the Bofa. So American Hosta, Main Hand, Bone Dagger for Defense, Warhammer for Defense, Reduction, Claws for DPS, DDS for 2 down. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what potions, we'll figure that out when we go in. That's pretty good. Whoa, this, this is actually, yo, Crystal Bow is actually hitting, boys. Decent first impression. Damn, that worked out really well, man. Crystal Bow? Actually pretty good. Even on expert mode, as long as you have the armor. We managed to do the fight in under four minutes. Very cool. So the sub-tier 75 mage setup is quite abysmal. You either... And Fire Surge with Tome of Fire, which is a bit better than what I have now, but you have no Ancients, which would make the Monkey Room probably more annoying, so... Either way, you know, it was just not that great. And you can see in Aka, I just splashed so, so much. So this is definitely a sign of trouble. Definitely Claw save right here. Oh, I died! No! Jesus, man, chill. Oh, like, holy shit, dude. I have, like, nowhere to go. There we go. Holy. Actually, I think I need to two down this. I need to two down this. I don't think I can afford to let it have another mage face. Because, yeah. It's going to take ages. Look, now it's fine. This is fine. Crystal Bull's doing work right now. There we go. We got it? Yo, let's go. Nice, we did it. Authentic as hell. That was hard, actually. 40 minutes, jeez. Yay, 450 a test. There we go, 22 left. The numbers are going down. Next on the list is Doesn't Bug Me, which is to do Carefree at level 4 with all the invocations on, which means we have to take care of Medic. So Medic is really annoying. You have to constantly attack between the boss and the swarms that will periodically, like, I don't know, every few seconds, would just pop up and try to heal the boss. So you have to constantly cycle between killing boss, killing minion, the whole fight, or else it heals a ton. Even one of them going through is at least like three to four hits that you have to do back on the boss at level four. So yeah, it's just more annoying, but not too, too difficult if you are good at dodging the aerial assault at level four. I had tons of practice when I was doing the 500 a long time ago, so. So, I try to do the 18 minute normal speed run time, but honestly, soloing is next to impossible because I brought the heaviest firepower that I can possibly bring to this tombs, which is Black Chins for the Monkey Nilos, Zarya Crossbow for extra damage power, double power potion so I can constantly spec with the Zarya Crossbow, and I was still over a minute off the 18 minute time. So this is definitely a task that has to be done with a large group using the Red Karras. Because the Red Karras boosts your entire team's damage by a ton. Which will make the difference. So basically we have to just go and get the Grandmaster 18 minute time done with 7 other people. And this task by default will also get completed. So I'm dropping some extra Missouri legs because I keep getting them and uh, yeah, there's no body yet after 9 Missouris but the reason why is because I need that extra cash so I can buy some items and lend it to my teammates so that they can actually do the hardest combat achievement task probably of all time currently and definitely the hardest for TOA which is the 8 man Grandmaster speed time of 18 minutes including downtime. It is extremely hard, so everybody needs, like, max gear. So I'm gonna, yeah, loan some of these items that my teammates need. They have the skills, and they also need the best gear, so it is worth it. So there is a ton of nuance when it comes to the 8-man speedrun task, where there's a lot of teamwork that are unique to only this challenge, and a lot of speedrunning strategies that you will never utilize under normal TOA circumstances. So I'll try my best to cover some of them. 
So the first big thing we're trying to learn is to do the puzzle room for Zebek as fast as possible. This strategy involves us all running to the same spot at the same exact time to fill the water because doing it this way allows us to all fill at the same time and no weird like delays will happen if we do it right and then we can just go back to the same exact spot and do it again and that will allow us to complete the puzzle before the crocodiles run to the palm tree so this will save us like 20 seconds right off the bat if we do it properly as Zebek is our first room oh. Pause champ. Pause champ. Pause champ. <laughs> oh! Now we can use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're done. We're done. Oh, look at that. That was cool. We just gotta do it like one or two more times. And I think we can go. <laughs> For our first full attempt, we actually managed to get just under 20 minutes, which is pretty damn good considering. That is two minutes off only on our first try and there were so many different strategies that we tried to do but of course we just don't have enough practice so we ended up failing a lot of them and not actually saving the time that we were supposed to so once we master all the different strategies or get good enough at the speedrunning strategies and the eight man then we can definitely get ourselves under 18 minutes after a few hours of practicing with the team we finally managed to get pretty decent at utilizing all the different speedrunning strategies in an 8-man and now I can show you a clip of each boss where we actually utilize the strategy and talk a little bit about it now. So the first boss we do is Zebek and the strategy is pretty straightforward. We have one guy with a BGS specking down the boss and two guys with a red Karis uh, hitting the boss at the start. So that way all of our crossbow specs will hit a lot higher. Instead of like a 110, it'll hit like a 130 something which really saves a lot of time. So that's why the Red Karras is huge, because basically there's going to be a guy Red Karrasing almost everything that we fight throughout the entire fight, which will boost our damage, since there's seven people that will utilize that Red Karras damage buff for the next uh, two to three hits that the Red Karras effect has every time. So that is huge. So Carefree is quite interesting here. So we open up with Red Karras once again, and everybody else are crossbows. And as soon as the boss goes down, the swarms will show up and the minions will show up, right? We're going to have two people, one on each side, taking care of the swarms that show up. Because we cannot allow a single swarm to get through. Because a single swarm, even at level 0 in an 8-man, will heal the boss like 140 HP. So that's a lot of time loss. So me and one guy is just constantly killing the swarms when the boss is weakened. And everybody else will kill the other minions that show up like the beetles and they'll help me with the swarms and we'll do that back to back because the boss will have no hp when it wakes up and then it's just going to instantly face to the next set of swarms and minions and by the end of it we should be able to zari crossbow one more time with a red karis assist and the fight should be fast so next up is akka is actually very straightforward not too different from a normal run you have one guy that butterflies the boss and if he does it well and RNG is decent, Akka will not change his prayers and attack style at all. So that means we can constantly maximize our DPS with the shadow on a DD. And we are also going to use our crossbow specs on the shadow with a red Karis assist from one of our red Karis speckers. And yeah, the boss should die really, really quick if everything goes right. If it doesn't go right, as in it switches prayers then yeah, we already know this is a failed run because the time is so tight that you basically have to rely on Akka not switching a single time to a different attack style. Also, we only have time to summon one Thrall and if you over summon your Thralls, it's gonna affect the last phase. As you can see, somebody had a mage guy up and that made the boss teleport one hit too early. So we lost some time there because of that. So next is the monkey room. So we got to talk about the puzzle because there's definitely a lot of strategy involved. We split ourselves into groups of four, two people each. There's one person that focuses purely on killing the monkeys. And then there's one person in the team that will fix the pillars, uh, the vents, and cure you of the corruption, things like that. And doing it this way means that we don't have to move around the entire map too, too often because yeah they have so much hp anyways that we're better off staying on our respective corners and don't overextend 
So for the Baba boss fight, we start off in a very specific way, utilizing, of course, the Red Karras into the Zarya Crossbow specs. Now, instead of doing one Zarya Crossbow, we're going to do two Zarya Crossbow specs in a row at the start because we have now gotten the special attack potion from the Ghost, which has the special cost. So yeah, we're able to Zarya Crossbow spec twice at the start, and doing so properly will force the boss to phase into the rolling boulder phase almost immediately or immediately if things go well and that saves a lot of time and of course we just uh, do baba pretty much normal after this point and we should be able to zarya cross one more time and we really want to drag the boss the first two phases near the pit because that gives us more time to attack the boulders as there's less of a cooldown if we do this properly, the special attack potion boost should last all the way to the start of Warden, in which case we will also open up with Zarya Crossbow specs two times, backed by a Red Karras on the Obelisk phase, first phase, and that will save us a ton of time. So phase two Warden, you want to go for a two down, so you will then use another special attack potion dose so that you can use your DDS twice as often. And that's required to get a 2 down Warden. And of course, you want to start off with somebody using a Red Kara spec. So that all the DDSs hit extra hard, speeding up the process. And we move on to Phase 3. So the last phase of Warden is pretty straightforward. Almost similar to how you normally do it. Except the difference is that you have your Zarya Crossbow specs. And your Special Attack Potion still lasting long enough, if you do it properly, to be used right after the skulls because right after the skull somebody can red carries the boss and everybody else will launch their zarya crossbow specs for extra damage and towards the end of the enrage phase of warden if you do have special attack potions because some people can actually just grab two potions of those which is four dose and other people provide them with the food then they can also zarya crossbow spec multiple times more i only have enough for one because iron man I really can only pick power once, but others can do it twice, so that will save a lot of time. But all in all, this run, we were a minute off, but uh, progressively, though, we were getting better and better as a team, just refining those speedrun strategies, and we got a bunch of low 18 minutes, like 18 fours, 18 10s, and there was also one tragic run where we would have probably gotten it, but for some reason, right as I enter Warden, I full crashed my client crashed and we managed to get that 18 30 second time even without me fighting the whole warden i could have easily contributed 40 seconds on average so that would have been it probably but i'll show you the real deal i dc'd what, what? No, way. no way yo no joke no joke Yo, we yes. did it! Yeah, oh my it. god! My oh. fucking god, bro! Oh, oh my no. god! I can't believe my CZB missed though. <laughs> that was, I lost the hit because I, I thought I, I just wasn't oh. clicking. Oh I my just, god! Yo, good job, boys. I just Holy came in my shit. pants, bro. Oh. Oh. oh my god! I love you guys. Holy I shit. added all of you. A shout out to the core team for sticking through for like the whole eight hours of trying. That was very demanding. So respect. And also, there were a few people who have already done this task before that came in to, you know, give us the wise knowledge. Mr. Noob Type, uh, Wittiga, Lily, and also Elite Hunter. This would have probably taken days of figuring out on my own without uh, these guys 
going through. So for today's progress, I didn't actually record it because after yesterday's 10 hours of 8 man speed running, my brain is so fried that I'm just making these silly mistakes and not recording. But I'll give you a quick summary. I accidentally did the perfect Zebek task. Turns out that one is weird because it's solvable, whereas all the other perfect tasks are all duo or higher. So I was working on the all boss invocation only task. And that one wasn't too bad because the only mechanics that I wasn't too great at is medic and step back. But because this ray challenge is only a level 310 challenge and I don't have to do things like increase the levels of the bosses. So they were all level zero to begin with. Made it a lot easier. So the two tasks, one called Fancy Feet and the other one called Better Get Moving, it's a bit glitched right now. You can actually complete the same task by just meleeing Warden. So I have to basically made him Warden twice and complete it twice to get completions for both. But now I'm just uh, making some mistakes because uh, apparently Thralls, if the wrong style is hit on it, doesn't count for melee. Which does make sense, but I just never thought about it. Well, you have failed fancy feet okay okay i didn't fail it <laughs> melee throw works guys we got it nice fancy feet done for the second time <laughs> god it's weird the area assault one counts for this so all the perfect ones is for me it's better off to just do them as grandmasters time to finish rest of the group tasks so we have the medic one where we simply cannot let the boss heal above 25 percent throughout the entire fight with medic on and it's not too hard you just need to make sure you have at least one other person just so that you guys can cover both sides similar to the eight man strat that we did before so it works pretty well only took us two tries Oh, yo, yo, hit it, hit it, hit it. Okay, Tipo, Tipo. Hit it, hit it. Nice. I think we did it, Darren. Yes! Auto medics. Holy shit, that was pretty hard. Not going to lie, the perfection of Scarabus is probably the most free Grandmaster task. So some of these Grandmasters are super misleading because some of them are 10 times, 20 times harder than the same tier difficulty. Like, this one's probably the easiest Grandmaster that the Tombs of Amuscut has. Just because, yeah, you don't need any of the invocations on. And the only weird part was just killing all the dung that hatched the minions. And you can easily just do that by either using like a Sang Staff or like a Bofa to attack them from far away. So you can easily avoid any of the dung explosions. Since that would fail you if you got hit by any of the explosions from anything. Alright, see? Oh, there it is. Perfect carefree and perfection of Scarabus done. Next is the Perfection of Outman King. So the hardest part about this Grandmaster task was definitely the puzzle part. Not even Baba. Baba's pretty straightforward, honestly. Especially if you take a chill and don't try to rush the boulders. Just kill the boulders and just stay back. It's pretty safe. But anyways, about the puzzle room, you gotta do it another 3 minutes. So that means you gotta go really, really fast. But at the same time, you can't fail any of the mechanics. So you have to fix the uh, walls. You have to... Uh, fix the vents, heal your partner from corruption, and also not step on the poison or take any of the volatile monkeys' explosions. So, the best thing to do is definitely know when the cursed baboon is coming, because if you see them, instantly freeze them with ancient. So that way, they do not land a ton of like poison mines on the ground for you to accidentally touch and fail. But other than that, some good teamwork, knowing the waves, and killing all the monkeys as fast as possible helps a lot. We kind of misunderstood some of the limitations here, so we actually did it in a harder way than you needed to do it. Because if you had the try again invocation on, you only had to clear the puzzle room one time in under three minutes. And then you can keep retrying the Baba boss, no matter how many times you die, up to ten times. So even if you fail Baba, just die on purpose and then restart again. We didn't understand that, we just literally reset the whole entire run we would do the puzzle under three minutes again and try to do a perfect baba once holy four left just the uh two perfect 
Wardens and the two perfect Akas. I think Akka will be probably the second overall hardest task. So we're saving that for, for last. The second set of tasks that I have left to do is the Warden Perfection task in Expert Mode. And it's pretty straightforward. The things that you are able to usually nullify through dodging or through the use of your prayers, if you mess any of those up, then it will fail. But there's also one extra thing that I didn't expect. It's the first phase obelisk. If any of the meteors hits you or your teammate, you also fail the task. So we have to use the speedrun strategy for this one because we want to Zarya crossbow the obelisk so that we can basically destroy the obelisk before the meteors have time to actually hit us. And that is definitely the strat here. But other than that, yeah, just make sure the entirety of Warden, like even the Enraged phase with the lighting on the ground, we cannot take a single hit from any of those mechanics. So this is very annoying because you have to go and fight all four bosses before you can even attempt this. So if you fail this attempt, you have to try again by killing all four of the other bosses before you go again. So it's a very time consuming task. And another difficult part is that you cannot really retry Warden like you could with Baba because like, for example, Baba, you can just bring Bruise in Super Combats. But with Warden, you're limited. You need special attack potions and you need salt, but you only have enough salt and special attack potion to really try it one attempt fully. Oh no! No! Did you... Oh, yeah. Fuck, I got hit at the very end. Hello, it says I failed a mate. It says you failed Zibic. Oh, Zibic. So oh. I'm pretty sure I didn't. Ah, oh, damn. So close. We each made a mistake then. Oh, did we do it? Yes! Oh my god, let's go. Holy shit, that was scary, dude. I was fucking sweating, dude. Holy. So it is time to do the last task to reobtain Grandmaster status. And I've saved arguably the worst task for last, outside of the 18 minute eight man task. And that is the perfection of hits the expert version of perfect Akatas. So this perfect version, like all the other ones, involves you not failing any of the mechanics. And it has so many mechanics that it's really hard to do with another person. So you can't solo it. If you could solo it, it'd be a lot easier, but the thing is you have to do it with at least another person and that makes it a logistical nightmare. So here's the first biggest problem. Each of us will spawn orbs. That means you get twice the number of orbs, which means we cannot dodge the Simon Says wave attacks in the same spots together because we will accidentally step on each other's orbs and you automatically fail the task. So that means we have to split up. One person in the middle, one person dodging the wave in a weird way on the outer circle. And that's only one part of the difficulty. The other part is making sure that you do not take damage off prayer from Akka's attacks. Akka with Stay Vigilant on is super annoying because he'll randomly switch attack styles unpredictably. Sometimes he'll switch within 2 seconds, other times he'll switch in like 20 seconds. So it's really difficult to gauge at times. And if it's maging and ranging with this super annoying invocation on called Step Back, he will melee you every time he also ranges and mages you. So you also have to pray melee into a prey range or prey mage, whatever his attack is. And if you fail to block either of those or forget to dodge the melee part of it, you fail the task. The last and final part is positioning. Getting to the spot so that you can dodge the Simon Says attacks for both of us is very difficult as well. Because sometimes if you move too haphazardly, you might spawn a ball on top of you. And then you automatically fail because of that because it hits you. So yeah, it's so, so challenging. And we have to do a ton of practice. 
So this task definitely requires you to learn the butterfly method because it just seems impossible without it. Because with the butterfly, you can stall the boss a bit from summoning the orbs and stalling it from activating the Simon Says Special quite a bit. Oh, you dodged it, dude. <laughs> it says. Holy shit, that was sick. Got it. Okay. Fang into claw, fang into claw. You guys thought I was done telling you the difficulties of this challenge? Nope, there's also the last phase, which has all the goddamn jizz balls randomly flying all over the goddamn map that it's really difficult to kill the last phase of Akka without getting hit a single time by these orbs. So on top of successfully making it all the way to the rage phase without failing a single prayer flick and a single orb touching you and your partner, you also now have to dodge these goddamn flying stupid white balls that just, yeah, goes everywhere. So that's why it's so, so hard. Getting closer. Nice. Uh, Alright, well. Beach. I think you missed the. I took, I took multiple orbs, bro. No, no, I missed. I took a hit from the something. I got hit by a bunch of orbs. <laughs> but that was the first full run with, of course, mistakes. But, you know, we wanted to see. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, okay. Three mistakes this time. Almost there, three mistakes. Now we need to get it to zero. Oh! What? So close, bro. Oh, shot. Damn. Oh, shot. What happened? I don't know. I don't see why it's perfect. <laughs> no, no! Fucking stupid fucking. Ah, oh, dude, it's so hard, man. Dude. Dude, look at this shit. Where the fuck were we supposed to go? Man. Yeah, we need to take our sweet time with this one, bro. Holy... Damn, zero mistakes except for the orbs at the end, dude. Holy. It's time. Oh! My god, dude. Wow, my one mistake. <laughs> <sighs> Just so hard sometimes, man. Oh my god. Alright, well, we got it down to one mistake now. We're almost there. Oh my... Uh, impossible, dude. There's just no... I just can't, like, go anywhere. I'm literally just stuck. Uh, Always one orb. Oh, oh, oh my, my god. She put my claws on and then... <laughs>lucky though on the spawns dude oh. <laughs> only took us like 10 hours of practicing uh, and learning some freaking <sighs> god damn <sighs> yo good good work goes good work goes god damn ah oh, there we go i forgot this has it so for grandmaster they added a bunch of stuff right i didn't talk about it until now but uh, one of the biggest ones that they added recently was the Thrall Timer. If you have the Grandmaster done, it's now doubled. 
instead of like one minute, it's like two minutes. So it's quite nice because that means I save a lot of prayer points when I use it at like tombs or something. Yep, thralls last 100% longer. Um, also, these are pretty much the same from before. Oh, this one's new. The ability to combine a Ferny Defender with a normal silt. So let's go ahead and... Ooh, what is this? Lucky Penny? Whoa, what is this? Does this give prayer? Oh, it doesn't. No, I don't know what it does. I'm not sure what this does, but uh, we'll worry about that later. But yeah, let's go. We will be covering the Lucky Penny in a future video soon, so definitely subscribe so you don't miss out on what it could offer. So we're going to combine this into the Infernic again. The Grandmaster Infernic, I guess. Um, it looks all right. It looks cool. It does match uh, the red, you know, that we got going on with our cape and like things like that. So it definitely looks nice. All right. You two in the comments, tell Goza to get his Grandmaster done. He only has like a few annoying tasks to do, so he should just get it over with. Oh. So for this armor task, I wanted to try out to see which ring is best for Armado when fighting it. It was between, of course, the good old Suffering and the Sears ring. So I brought the Sears ring to try it out, and honestly, it just wasn't that good. You take so much more damage with the Sears ring over uh, the Suffering. And the Suffering also had a lot of recoil damage, which was really good for killing the boss when it was low HP. A lot of times, I just left the boss at like 5 HP, but then I take so much damage, I could not... Hit that last 5 HP because I'm too busy eating. So the suffering overall is just a lot better. It's way more safe, sustainable, and also free DPS. Because unlike the other three bosses where they don't hit you at all, Armadale will hit you. You cannot cheese Armadale like the other bosses. So the suffering is just so good. But I still recommend bringing the Light Bearer, if you have it with you, as the ring to put on when you're just waiting for the boss to spawn. Because it's so good. All that extra special for like Eldritch staff, for example... Just keeps feeding you a ton of prayer. So, despite struggling a lot more because of the Sears ring, I'd still say it's probably second best if you don't have suffering. No idea why you wouldn't. But anyways, we got a new PB over 50 plus kills done this trip. Could do more with slaughters, but honestly, I do not want to make my task too much longer. So, yeah, we can easily just finish these tasks in one trip with the shadow, regardless. Oh, blue dragons! Hell yeah, that's fun. Oh my god. I haven't done Vorkath in a long time. Sweet. Um, we got two items apparently still left here. Two really rare ones though. So, getting trolled by by Jagex, of course. Getting them pre-log. Dragon arrow tips though. Oh my god, a draconic fistage! No way! Ha <laughs> ha! You're trolling me, dude. Dude, this is actually like my fourth one here. It's not going to show it. It's not going to show that it's my fourth one here, but yeah. I did get a back-to-back -back fist here that one time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Vorkath is going to be good for rebuilding my Dragon Arrow stack for future content. I am at a flimsy 500 Dragon Arrows. Give me those Dragon Bolts, boy. Damn, we did it. 33 kills an hour. That's a... Uh... That's a new PB.